What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. I am the Director of Marketing and Media for Warrior Rising. And here we get to have the exclusive opportunity to talk to so many incredible veterans about their businesses, about their experiences, to bring it directly to you. Now, today we have one of the 10 incredible veterans competing in Detroit in September of 24. We have Chris Wysong, the CEO of Bucket of Bread. We are so excited. So first of all, Chris, welcome to the show and congratulations. Alyssa, thank you. It is super awesome to be here, and it's super awesome to have been chosen to be able to yeah. uh, greet all of you in person in Detroit. This is exciting. Thank you. Super exciting. So first, um, let's just talk about what are you most looking forward to in Detroit? So I am looking forward just to be able to walk in and have that awe kick you in the face to where you just get to see so many people, hear amazing stories and grab onto as much inspiration as I can so that I can take my idea and further launch it into the next spectrum. I love that. And I mean, you are super charismatic and we have to ask, right? You have the outfit, you have a, you know, bucket of bread, like tell us about that. What, what is the story? You mentioned stories. So what is your story? So my story basically is I'm going to blame my mom. So <laughs> little boy, me, she basically always had me in the kitchen. And I think uh, after talking to her as an adult, her real goal was just to be able to make sure I could take care of myself. But it gave me lots of fond memories of hanging out with her, making stuff and getting comfortable to be the guy later in life that made the dinners at the house and things like that. If there was a charity event, I'd bake something and people loved it. And then I became kind of known as, hey, it's that bread guy. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is fun. Uh, then for whatever reason, in the middle of 2020, I just woke up with this conceptual thought that all of the things you've been doing, you could completely put it in a bucket and use that as a platform to help people. Because part of the reason my company exists is to take some profits and share those with charities, combating wow. hunger and fighting food insecurity. Wow. That is incredible. And what I always say with veterans, it seems to, this could be you know, bias, but a lot of veteran owned businesses always have this desire to continue giving back. Now, would you say there's something tied with your military service to that selfless serviceness? Well, I think that's just part of the character that builds us as yeah. veterans. It really is because we are about that community. We are about giving to people we care. Yeah. So for us, I believe as a veteran community, it's important. And that's something yeah. that I also see when I talk to other veterans. And I love that about us. Yeah, I, I could say, and I can see it too in the, you know, enthusiasm. So with um, going through Warrior Rising, with your business and everything, what was the most beneficial thing that has come out of going through Warrior Academy? So for me, I just really like, it seems like Every so often you get an email that says, hey, jump in this class. Hey, jump in this class. Yeah. Uh, a master class of ideas and concepts that when you sit in on them, you're opening yourself up to being able to accept that new idea or maybe a different way that you haven't thought of. Because a lot of us are solopreneur veterans. And doing this alone is just really something you shouldn't do. So a group like Warrior Rising is just it's something you have to be sure to do. If you're starting a business, jump in groups like this because we're a community and being part of that and participating, that helps you also. And it's just an incredible place to be uh, when you have that support. Absolutely. And kind of going along that um, with community that we've been described as a family, a synergistic you know, type of tribe. But what other tips would you give to transitioning military who have a business idea or maybe already have a business? So I think the best first step that I accidentally took, because, you know, going into this, when you don't really have an idea what to do, I found the local university and they had a small business development center as part of that uh, SBA funded group. And by talking to them, getting my foot in the door to start the idea into a plan, into a thing, and take it further. I think that was the great first step because then they introduced me to other local state groups. And part of that is the Veteran Business Outreach Center, 
then you start connecting to other people who say, hey, have you heard of Warrior Rising? And the next thing you know, you're like, I have not. Let me try this out. So you find yeah. yourself slowly getting involved more and more. And that activity, I think, really helps snowball you down that road towards hopeful success. Absolutely. I love that. And taking that first step matters a lot, too. Um, so what is in your bucket of bread? Is it as simple as we think? Or what exactly? What is it? I'm sure everyone's so dying to know. What is bucket of bread? <laughs> so what I have done is I have taken mm -hmm. these certified organic flowers and I blend and I mix them together and they come to you in these 100% recyclable buckets. When you get them home, you simply mix in some lukewarm water. After a little bit of a wait, you end up with a bucket of dough that turns into sort of like a meal prep kit for baking because wow. this will last up to two weeks in your fridge. Uh, this, this little bucket here will make about two pounds of dough. And you have you can make it all at once if you'd like or use it over time. I've got different recipes on the website, and I'm putting new ones all the time on there for, through the newsletter. Uh, but it makes breads, pizzas, cinnamon buns, garlic knots, breadsticks, pretzels, bagels, really anything you can imagine using a dough for. The nice part about all of these, the traditional white, the hearty wheat, and the seven grains, those are my basic uh, products that I have now with others in the future. But they're made without preservatives. There's no fats, no oils, there's no dairies, there's no added sugars. It's just the certified organic good stuff. And it comes to you in a simple to use, easy bucket that's 100% recyclable. And like I said before, at least 10% of my profits, those are earmarked for charities combating hunger. But I ship these nationwide. And I have a, a lot of cool little deals that I put out every once in a while through that newsletter. I'm right now, I think in a couple of days, I'll be giving away a year's supply as a contest. Just all kinds of fun stuff that I try to do because this really is, as I've said before, it's the next best thing since sliced bread. I love that. I mean, and you're so enthusiastic. I love it. I know the storytelling is so important. The pitch process is coming up. It, obviously, you're already doing this, right? Like you've been practicing, but also you've been doing this. You've been selling. You've been um, out there marketing. So what? how are you preparing now for the pitch conference next month? Okay, so that's the part where it's like you have all these slides that we're like, here's our yeah. structure that we want you to operate inside of. So now it's like, okay, I've got my structure. What constraints am I facing uh, inside of that to where I can use them to become innovative in how I present the information? So right now I'm taking each slide in a mental breakdown of how does my story fit into the data that I'm trying to give to the audience, the judges, yeah. because you're on stage. So it's also, in my mind, I have to have a little bit of entertainment there because we just don't want to come up there and read a <laughs> spreadsheet to you. So yeah. let's get up there. Let's have some fun. Let's throw some stuff in there that shows the, like, thank you for acknowledging the enthusiasm, mm -hmm. but be enthusiastic about my product to the point to yeah. where I'm sending the message that this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's got the traction that it needs to get past the, hey, I just started this thing. Let's go to the next yeah. level and make this a nationwide brand. This should be in everybody's cupboard. So that, that's the kind of message that I need to be able to relay in a good way. No, absolutely. And especially with a lot of these companies that do, you know, the if you go, not the zombie apocalypse, but, you know, something similar, right? Like having something like this might be actually useful to have in your cupboard in case, you know, hard times hit or something like that. So. I'm super excited to meet everyone next month. And there's so much when I get to talk to every single veteran, very blessed to be able to have that opportunity. I'll be able to meet you in Detroit. Um, what is the one, two or three pieces of things? What are you really hoping to get out of this? I'm really looking forward to making that connection to where, you know, money is always a great uh, motivator, yep. but really beyond money, if you can make a connection with people that say, Hey, I know what you're doing and I know how you're trying to get there. I have a wing for you to sit under. I'm going to take you there. That networking type of a possibility, even the thought of that it's a possibility is just mind blowing. And I'm amazed that this could be a real thing. So thank you. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, and just another question with Warrior Rising, with being an entrepreneur, with just being a transitioning military person at one point in your career had to have been a little scary. I think for most of us, there's some sort of fear, right? The, what was what was your military transition like? Or did you already have this kind of underway 
as you were transitioning? My transition was really, I mean, you go through, uh, I was what's called an active guard reservist, an AGR okay. soldier. Yep. Mm -hmm. And basically it was, hey, go to this two week. You don't have to put your uniform on. Mm -hmm. They'll teach you how to use LinkedIn. And I mm -hmm. met a few people through that that are in this local area. And I was able to secure something through a little bit of a coffee uh, business date, if you will. And I did that for a good couple of years and uh, found something better to where I was like, well, this is how I'm going more fitted and suited to do. So I moved on to that. And then I had this idea and just decided, well, I'm not going to do anything for anyone else. I'm going to try this full time because I think this really does have the legs that is needed to get it out there and beyond just me at a farmer's market, if you will. No, absolutely. And I mean, with every business owner, whether they're veteran or not, there's going to be a setback. There's going to be some challenges or obstacles or something in the way. Um, how do you personally deal with any setbacks or challenges that have been thrown your way? Well, after the initial shock and the forehead slap of the, oh, no, I just kind of try to be a duck with water on its back and just let it roll off, suck it up and move on to the next idea because, all right, well, that didn't work as they say, back to the drawing board. So that's kind of my mentality. I, I what, What's that uh, uh, Ted Lasso show? You know, be the goldfish. Be the goldfish. Don't let it bother you. Just take it, learn from it, and move on. I love that. Great piece of advice. Um, how do you balance just the demands of being an entrepreneur, probably your personal life, other things like that? How, what, what does balance look like for you if you believe in it? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would have to answer that with a similarity of the previous answer is yeah. I try to just let things roll off my back. I am very sporadic. I try not to plan too much yeah. uh, for things. Uh, right now we're in the middle of a whole lot of stuff. I guess uh, if you don't follow me on social media, mm -hmm. there's a huge announcement coming from the Bucket of Bread world. And that is that Bucket of Bread in November is something big is happening because oh, we wow. have a bun in the oven. So we're excited for this, and that's just kind of the way things go with, uh, with life and doing the stuff and try to do it all as much as you can, prioritize where it makes sense. Yeah. That's kind of us. I love that's great, and congratulations. And how Thank exciting. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, so what has been the most rewarding part of your entrepreneurial journey or just the journey of Bucket of Bread? What has been the most rewarding thing? The amazing people, it just like, you know, I'll be invited to an event to do this or something out of the woodwork says, hey, you should go do that. And all along the way, I get to meet some of the most interesting people. And like I said, for what I'm looking forward to, those people all have those stories that I can listen to and take as a motivational, inspirational message and somehow use that in my own learning in life. So that's that's really the best thing. I mean, I was just saying the other day. I am so surprised how a little idea at 3 a.m. can just <laughs> take you to all these little places and do all these little things. And I mean, I can only see with the direction if this goes towards the sky, how many more opportunities like that is going to be out there. So just being able to be around the folks that inspire. No, absolutely. Community is everything. I still connect with the veterans I met in Iowa, and I'm, I just love doing that, expanding the network, but also, again, just community. People like feeling a part of that, like family or tribe and having people to go to, to, to bounce ideas or deal with setbacks or things with similar mindsets, you know, in business. So how has community engagement been uh, a part of your business? How do you implement that? So once a year in February, I take a big check for a photo opportunity to a local pantry. And I, instead of a dollar amount, because I don't want to like be braggadocious or anything like that, I'll just put <laughs> hearts. So those little hearts in the dollar amount area, those represent February is the month of love. So that's part of the bucket of bread process is to present something as a little bit of a, hey, I do care, I'm ready to help more. The bigger that I can make this company, the bigger of an impact it'll have in helping the community. And I've partnered with a few different food pantries around the country to where you can even send buckets directly to them because they make wow. great shelf stable items for families that need good quality food and are facing food insecurity. So that as a tax deductible donation is also a way that I can use that to help make this a better thing for the 
community, the groups that I like to help with this business idea. That is awesome. Noble and incredible. And I'm sure the families in the pantries absolutely love to have that support from, you know, a local, local person. So I love to see that. How do you see the future of Bucket of Bread evolving in the next however many years? We don't need to put a number on it, but how do you see your evolution? <laughs> so I would like to see this one bigger than myself. I would like to, as I am bigger than myself, that uh, some implied messages with that, because then I'm on shelves. There's uh, a larger e-commerce presence. There's more of a nationwide knowledge of yeah. where I and who I am. But I would like to see that more than me people turn into a B corporation, a benefit type corporation, to yeah. where that my social aspect of me also drives the business side of the bucket of bread mission. And once that's established, then we can start looking at additional product lines. I have some ideas like uh, an ancient grains, a biscuits, and I have a make of mean biscuit and gravy. But, yeah. you know, just different product ideas. Um, I do have one that's ready to launch once I approve the labeling. That's for a double zero type pizza dough kit and um, things like that as I evolve. And then maybe even start reaching into some of these uh, international markets because the baking mix industry is growing, uh, especially in the Asian market right now. So I think this would be a great thing to have, like maybe in Japan or something like that. You know, if all, all I get to do is dream. That's my worldwide domination goal. So I absolutely love it. And again, the enthusiasm it gets me. <laughs> I can't wait to see the pitch. I watch. All well, the if you Google my it. business, yeah. I have it listed on, I think it's the Google My Business. It's listed as the Bucket of Bread World Headquarters for my, my location. So <laughs> that is awesome. I'm, I'm thinking ahead and I'm being motivated for exactly. myself right now. It's the my bread vision king. board. Yeah, That's I love right. that. You got to will it, right? We have to, it's the mindset and it's uh, manifesting, manifest into existence. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, any veterans that are looking to join Warrior Rising, how would you help them make that step? Would you advise them to, or what would that sound like? Uh, go to the warriorrising.org website and make that first call, make that first button click to make a contact. Sign up. That's really all it takes. It's free to do. So <laughs> it gives you no reason to say no. Do it. Find out where you sit. They will guide you and help you because they want to see you succeed. Make it happen today. Absolutely love that. So Chris, I really do appreciate you coming on. If you can share with everyone how they can find you, any other additional things you want to share with us right now as we are heading into Detroit, the floor is yours. I am just super excited to even be able to say I can't wait to meet everyone in person. If you want to reach out to me, just go to bucketofbread.com and go to the contact page or find that phone number at the bottom. Call me, write me buy a bucket, send a bucket to a pantry, all of the things, but I, I, I can't wait to see it. So thank you again. Absolutely, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I cannot wait to shake your hand in real life next month. And I look forward to it. Everyone listening, thank you so much for hopping on. It looks like uh, we have another guest, but we're going to save that for later. <laughs> we'll see you guys <laughs> next time. 